demonstration showing how these changes are going to affect the way you model in 3D. I've got this object here already drawn. Let's just push pull that up. We've got a height of say two feet. We have a tool here called Extract. The Extract tool has been around for a long time, but now the Extract tool will create planar objects. There's a new highlighting feature in Vectorworks 2011 which makes it real easy for you to know which face you're trying to extract. When you click on the face it highlights in a sort of a dark red colour. Click on the green tick or hit the Enter key and it's now created that object as a polygon. I can use all my 2D tools on this so let's just offset that by an inch. So it's an inch bigger. Try to make sure it's an inch smaller. So let's extract that. Pull that out by three inches. Click and I can extract that again if I want. So back to my extract tool. Let's click, enter, and we'll start extracting that. Maybe offset it before we extract, before we push pull it. So let's make that four inches high. And there you are. So there's a change, I think, in the way that we create things because we used to have to be very careful about what view we were in if we extruded an object. We'd have to be very careful about um, things always starting, extrusions always used to start at zero on the working plane. We used to have to use that look at working plane command. If I create a, a working plane on the side of that object, I can then draw things like circles on it. So let's just draw a circle on the side of this object. back to my push-pull tool, change the mode, I'm going to use that and that object. Now if I highlight that circle, that's the circle I'm going to be pushing or pulling. So let's just grab that, pull it through, and you notice it's taken completely a side off that object. There's a big chunk missing now. The push-pull tool has two different modes for moving the face the extrude face and the move face. If I use the move face and again notice how easy it is to see which side you're moving because they highlight so easily. Now notice as I'm moving this face because it's part of a curve or that I use the, the circle to cut that hole notice how it's trying to continue that circle as much as it can. And I think that's pretty neat so I'm going to do the bottom one using that way and the top one just using the move face. So I've now created quite a different shape from what I started. You can make the shape smaller or longer with this new push-pull tool. And I think this is going to be really cool. There are some really nice features with this. Uh, one of the ones I like is to set a working plane on the face of the object. Draw a curve. I'm going to use a NURBS curve for this. So starting up here, there's my NURBS curve, back to my push-pull. Select that. I can either pull that out, or if I go to this last mode, choose the curve, choose your object, and I can either pull out that face or this one. And so now you're getting into some very cool freeform modeling, I reckon. It's just going to undo that. I'm going to extract some 3D faces here. So that's a face. I'm going to extract that. It's now a planar object. I can now assign color. I can assign a hatch. I can assign a new concept called a tile as well. Now a tile is a much more graphic 
type hatch. They're a lot easier to edit than a hatch. Vectorworks comes with a bunch already, so you can make it look like class block. And these stay in 3D, so because it's a planar object, as I fly around this object in 3D, that graphic will stay on there. If I go back to hatch, and I'm going to extract that face, and I'm going to hatch that as well. Now when I do a something like a hidden line rendering, you can see my graphics, are, my hatches, appear in that graphic. So as you fly around, there they are. They stay in 3D. Now, so we've talked about tiles. I'd like to, to uh, in case there are some landscapers there, I'd like to look at planar graphics from a landscape point of view. There's a park area I've drawn. So these are just uh, objects, they're just polygons. Now if you just draw in polygons that's great, looks in 2D, pretty cool. Now if you change to a 3D view, it does appear, these planar graphics look exactly like 3D information. If you use the push-pull tool, you can quickly generate your objects in 3D. So I always, oh, using the wrong mode, sorry. So let's pull that up, let's make that uh, three feet high. We can push pull this up, let's make that uh, two inches high, and so on. And so it's really easy to take what you've got and extrude it into these 3D shapes. If you do a quick rendering, Now you can quickly see the um, the rendered view. So it's real easy now to take a, a plan view and start pushing and pulling it around. One of the things I've, um, this isn't a very glamorous change, it's something called scalable symbols. In the past, I've used lots of symbols like this, page-based symbols like this one here. I write in the size of the, uh, the height of the object. And it's for my finished floor levels normally. So I used to use an object like this because it would uh, I could give the contractor all the different heights that I wanted my different floor levels to be on. So it used to be really useful, but unfortunately in earlier versions of Vectorworks there was no such thing as a scalable symbol. So if I wanted to use this at 1 to 50 scale or 1 to 100 scale, I used to have to have two symbols. Now you can scale objects. Or scale symbols, I should say. There's also a change where you can decide that your symbols are, instead of being world-based units, as they always used to be, they can be based on page-based units. These symbols will automatically change scale regardless of the layer so that it's always they always look the same regardless of the scale that you use them on. So I, I'm really happy about this because it means I've thrown away about six folders of, of symbols that I don't need. I only need one folder for these symbols. It doesn't matter when I use them. I know they're always going to be exactly the same size.
So let's just have a look at some of these symbols. Let me choose this one. So on this scale layout looks fine. Let's change to my walls and slabs. And you can see it's nothing more than a tiny little dot because of the difference in scale between these two layers. Let's pick up this one here. And you can see it's exactly the same size. Now these symbols don't have to worry about what scale you're using them. And I think that's going to be a, a big change. It's going to mean that it's be, uh, what would you call it? It's not quite foolproof, but at least it's a no-brainer when you use these particular symbols and you move from different scale layers. They'll all look the same. There'll be a nice consistency. Now walls and slabs are going to be a major change as well. One of the changes with walls and slabs uh, is that they interact with each other. Now I'm going to have to go through this slightly slowly unless you guys have seen some other presentation. Now first of all walls have 3D components. Let's look at a wall and discuss the components. Here's a wall style I created earlier. Now if you've been using Vectorworks 2009 or 2010, you should by now have been using walls with components. So you can create a wall with, in this case I've got lining, there's a structural part, there are battens or ventilation or cavity on the outside, and then I've got my cladding. So I've got a ventilated cavity system uh, with my cladding on the outside. Now each part, each component has its own settings. So I've got the cladding has its own settings, has its own class. So I've chosen to have the a name for this exterior wall component, called it cladding or siding, whatever you prefer. I've got a class for it. And a couple of things that are new, offset from bottom. I can set this to be two inches lower. Now where I live, you always have to finish the weatherboards 50 millimeters below the slab for rain protection. Now I can set this exterior cavity or this exterior component to be two inches below my slab. And I think this is really cool. I've been waiting for this for such a long time. Uh, you can tell the wall, you can tell the, the component to follow the wall top peaks or to follow the wall bottom peaks or not. And if you choose not to, the wall can go up and down, but the cladding will stay fixed on the front of the building. Now in Vectorworks 2010 they introduced this concept of the core of the wall, the structural part of the wall. It is really important. Uh, number one, it's important because when you use auto-join walls, it automatically joins the two cores together. 